Luke Correa is the Democratic congressman from the state of California. He joins yes. us live from Capitol Hill right now. Congressman, thanks for joining us here on the Hill. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yes. so we were talking all last week sort of who would blink first, Joe Biden or Kevin McCarthy. Did your guy blink? Seems like he moved a bit uh, as it relates to work requirements. I think both, I think both sides are still negotiating. Uh, uh, Joe Biden just took off to Japan, but he's going to come back two days early to finish the negotiations. Bottom line, Americans work hard, and we work hard to make sure we pay our bills and pay them on time. The federal government also has to pay their bills and on time. So whatever side blinks first, let's cut a good deal for the American taxpayers, for Americans, and make sure we pay our bills. That's the bottom line. It, it, is your bottom line, though, when it comes to work requirements for some federal assistive programs, is that something that you, uh, Congressman, would support? I don't prefer that. I don't prefer working for Medicaid. I think health care is one of those services that if you don't pay it on time, if you don't get that health care up front, it's going to cost you a whole lot more later on. You have women, men with cancer. You let it go. It costs you a whole lot more when you have to go to the hospital and get more serious, more intense treatment. So I think there's a lot of room to negotiate on issues. But the bottom line is, let's not be foolish and not invest in health care for those people that need it. Do you think, I, I guess, it's the last question on this. Um, it wouldn't hold up your vote yeah. as it relates to a debt ceiling deal, it sounds like. And I wonder well, if that's, well, in the end, what happens with well, the let, Democratic let me, caucus. Let me be clear. Well, I think, let me be clear, I think all of us as Americans, I think most members of Congress do not want to default on our national debt. The implications for the dollar, the implications for interest rates, the implications for our economy are tremendous. So we have a Republican-controlled Congress, we have split government, we have to negotiate something. At the end of right. the day, it has to be a deal that's worth good for Americans. And so you ask, am I going to hold up my vote? I want to make sure we have a good deal. There are some things maybe I won't want to do that I'll have to vote for, but at the end of the day, I want to vote for something good that's good for America. We have to unite on this stuff and cut the deal. Right. Uh, I mentioned you're from the state of California, border state, and uh, there's a pretty big story that we've been following yes, over the last couple of weeks there as it relates to Title 42. I want to show you the numbers um, of apprehensions along the southern border all across the U.S. Before the expiration of Title 42, you can see there in the bluish purple, it was basically at about 10,000 a day. Last couple days, that's dropped in half to 5,000. 5,000 congressmen is still a really big number when you're talking about day after day after day, week after week, month after month. It, it, is that what success looks like in your eyes? Well, let, let's pull back and look at the big picture here. The big picture is this is the biggest movement of, of refugees since World War II. World War II, we had 60 million, 60 million Europeans on the move. Right now, post-COVID world, economies are shattered around the world. So you expect people to try to come to the United States. And by the way, the U.S. is the only economy really hitting on all eight cylinders. Unemployment is really low. Looking at inflation. So people are voting with their feet to move to come to the U.S. At the same time, look at your numbers, what's going on at the border. Those numbers are going down, but Mexico right. also is holding a lot of those refugees, trying to take care of them. Guatemala is trying to do the same thing. Colombia has almost 2.5 million Venezuelan refugees. This is a worldwide phenomena. The Canadians are struggling to figure it out. So it's not about a number at the border. It's about trying to figure out how we kickstart these economies around the world and how to get you know, people to stay home, to be able before to earn we go, a living. And this before we go, what Congressman. we ignoring. Yes, sir. No, but, but before we go, I wanted to ask you, because your colleagues on the other side of the aisle, uh, there's growing chatter about maybe calls for impeachment against Alejandro Mayorkas, the DHS secretary. You're on the House Homeland Security Committee. I'm wondering what your impressions are of his and job. Judiciary, and judiciary, that's correct. Yeah, um, and, and I'm wondering your impressions of his you job know, and sort of the argument that you would make as to why he should keep his job. Mallorca has done an impossible job under impossible circumstances. 
Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.